Hello and welcome to our webcast, The Importance of Disability Specific Etiquette Awareness. My name is Kristen Hamilton and I am an Employment Specialist for VCU's Rehabilitation Research and Training Center. Hi, my name is Bethany Mogares and I'm an Employment Specialist for VCU's Rehab Research and Training Center. In our previous webcast, we discussed the fundamentals of disability etiquette and the importance that they serve as a guide for demonstrating disability etiquette when serving others or working around individuals with disabilities. It's important to be aware that not every individual with a disability requires the same level or same type of support. It's also important to consider that some populations of individuals with disabilities have specific considerations that are unique to their disability. In this webcast, we'll be covering various uh, populations of disabilities and touching on those specific considerations. First, we will be discussing individuals with visual impairments or vision loss. Some individuals may have limited sight, distorted sight, or may not be able to see at all. There are varying degrees of visual impairments. Some individuals cannot afford glasses or contact lenses and have a visual impairment as a result. Visual impairments are those which cannot be corrected with the use of glasses or contact lenses. There are two types of impairments, loss of central vision, loss of peripheral vision, um, as well as several more. Um, blurred vision, generalized haze, extreme light sensitivity, night blindness, partial blindness, complete blindness, distance vision impairment, and mild to moderate blindness. Some of these individuals will need written information in large print, braille, or some form of audio. Near visual impairment, presenting near visual activity worse than M6 or M08 with existing correction. Um, and you can read a little bit more about that if you're interested in knowing. Visual impairments and visual loss or vision loss. Um, some other important things to remember. Introduce yourself upon entering the room. Speak directly to the person and not to their companion. Um, and going back to introducing yourself, avoid saying, do you know who this is? Um, do not shout when you speak. People with vision loss can often still hear. Include details when describing things to someone with vision loss. You could describe colors, textures, shapes, and landmarks are helpful. An example might be the analog clock analogy. It is okay to use phrases like nice to see you because it is still nice to see someone even if they have vision loss. You also want to remember if a person has a guide dog present, uh, do not distract it in any way. Now we're going to talk about individuals um, with auditory disabilities or deafness. Individuals with an auditory disability may not be able to hear at all while others may be able to hear a small amount. Hearing loss can affect one or both ears. Hearing loss can also range from mild to severe. According to the World Health Organization, hearing loss may result from genetic causes, complications at birth, certain infectious diseases, chronic ear infections, the use of particular drugs, exposure to excessive noises, and aging. Some individuals use the term hard of hearing to describe a person who communicates through spoken language and may use hearing aids or have cochlear implants. Deaf people can hear very little to not at all. Deaf people often use sign language to communicate. If you see two people signing with one another, do not stare. They may be having a private conversation. According to the World Health Organization, oh, sorry about that, um, make eye contact and look at the person you're communicating with rather than the translator. Greetings, wave casually, not frantically, and wave in the person's peripheral vision field. 
If you do know sign language, it is appropriate to use. During introductions, sign your name using the alphabet. In the deaf community, people will create sign names, um, but if you are not a person with uh, auditory disability or deafness, do not make up your own sign name. Next, we'll be discussing mobility disability and impairments. A mobility disability, also referred to as a physical disability, describes an individual's inability to use one or more extremities. Mobility impairments can be conditions present at birth or the result of an injury or illness. There are two types of severe mobility impairments, which include quadriplegia, which refers to paralysis of all four limbs and often the central or trunk part of the body. Paraplegia refers to the loss of function to the lower limbs and extremities. A lack of strength needed to walk grasp objects or lift items is often a characteristic of a mobility disability. An individual with a mobility impairment may use a wheelchair, crutches, or a walker to assist with mobility. When working with someone with a mobility disability, avoid touching or leaning on an individual's wheelchair. Keep ramps and wheelchair accessible doors unlocked and unblocked. If the counter of your business is too high, walk around the counter and provide direct assistance that way. Avoid peering over the counter. Be aware of people's reach limits. Place items within reach and ensure there is a clear path to travel. People with respiratory or heart conditions may have mobility needs. Therefore, uh, avoid assuming that all mobility impairments are visible. Okay, so now we're going to look at verbal expression disability. So some individuals with um, a verbal expression disability may have difficulty with speaking, communicating their thoughts accordingly, and or their speech may be difficult to understand. So these challenges could be related to a cognitive impairment and or the physical production of those sounds. And sometimes it's difficult for these individuals to find the appropriate words that fit within the context of what they're trying to say. Um, it's also important to consider that not every individual that has difficulty with expressive language also experiences difficulty with uh, receptive language or language comprehension. So in other words, you know, just because they um, might have difficulty with being understood um, or you know physically speaking does not mean that they can't understand what you're saying. So it's always important to speak to an individual with a verbal expression disability the same way you would other uh, people unless otherwise specified. So some important uh, consideration to note would be um, to concentrate on what the individual is saying. Um, you know, make sure that you have uh, their full attention and you're providing um, your full attention to them as well and your body language is um, showcasing that and that you're focusing on what they are trying to say. Indicate when you do not understand what the individual is trying to communicate. Um, it's good to have that feedback for them so that they can um, work on, you know, having the opportunity to express what they are trying to say. Um, it's also important to provide wait time for the individual to finish or repeat what they're saying. So allowing wait time for, you know, comprehension of what you had said to them and then allowing wait time for them to generate a response and to say their response. Um, it's important not to finish uh, their sentences for them, just again, just being patient and allowing that wait time. Um, and it's also important that if you are having difficulty with uh, understanding after offering to, um, allowing them to repeat themselves, try to offer another uh, method of communication. So having them either write it down or text it, um, in a text box or um, have them physically show you what they're trying to, um, the message they're trying to convey. 
Okay, so now we're going to look at developmental disabilities and a developmental disability also encompasses intellectual or cognitive disabilities. So these individuals, um, the disability is usually present at birth or diagnosed later in life. Uh, individuals with a developmental disability may be impacted in a variety of ways and at different levels of severity. So not every individual that shares a diagnosis shares the same experiences. So not everyone experiences the same symptoms or the same level of symptoms. Also, individuals with a developmental disability may experience an impact on their physical, mental, or emotional development. The learning and processing of new information may be challenging and repetition can be helpful. So creating routines and creating structures also beneficial for this population of individuals. So now looking at some important considerations when working with individuals with a developmental disability would be um, to provide information that is clear, um, simple wording, and to use concrete concepts opposed to abstract concepts. So avoid using idioms or figures of speech. It is also helpful to break down complex or lengthy instructions into smaller steps or, you know, possibly chunking information together um, and allowing time to process that information. So going into allowing wait time for processing of information and for the individual to generate a response as well. Um, and also ensure that the individual has an understanding of the information discussed by asking them to summarize. So you know, after you provide an instruction or a question, um, just making sure that they understand what the expectation is of them. So asking them, okay, can you repeat back what I said? Or, you know, can you summarize what we just talked about? Um, and then also, it is in helpful to, um, if there is a lack of understanding, it's helpful to offer to rephrase a question or instruction of some sort. Um, executive functioning abilities could be impaired for this specific population of individuals. So the use of lists and schedules are often very helpful. Um, it's important to discuss the strategies that best work for them. And it is helpful to discuss any changes to the work routine, if at all possible, in advance. Um, that is shown that it's, you know, helps allow them to process the change and adjust accordingly. Okay, so now we're going to look at mental health disabilities. Um, so an individual with a mental health disability can include a broad range of diagnoses. So the symptoms that are exhibited um, from one person to another can vary. Um, also, individuals with a mental health disability may have difficulty coping with the tasks and or interactions of everyday life. The disability may interfere with the individual's ability to feel, think, or relate to others. Um, mental health disability is often commonly referred to as an invisible disability. So it's pretty common that it goes unnoticed and that, you know, there's not real, it's not as evident as um, maybe a physical disability might be. Um, and it's also important to note that um, we want to allow the person to disclose if they feel comfortable. So we never really want to ask about that. We want to respect everybody's privacy and um, confidentiality and allow them to disclose should they choose to. Okay, so some important notes to consider. Um, it is so important to build good rapport and trust within a working relationship um, with an individual with a mental health disability. Um, having I, an, a, an identified um, support network in the workplace is very beneficial. Uh, also having an open line of communication between you and the individual. So providing more frequent um, wellness check-ins, maybe weekly or daily. Um, that's something that can be communicated between you and the individual. 
Also, um, it's important to be aware that if the individual appears to be confused or upset, they could be overwhelmed or anxious. So be mindful of the way the individual, um, what they're saying, their tone of voice, their body language, um, speak in a calm tone and offer to repeat information if necessary or break down any instructions or tasks step by step. And um, lastly, employers and human resource personnel should be familiar with available resources. So this could include the business's EAP program, their employee assistance program, or um, as well as the local crisis intervention um, numbers and other um, helping personnel that are um, work with individuals with mental health um, disabilities. Okay, so the importance of disability specific etiquette awareness and how it impacts businesses and communities is, you know, overall, um, it'll help to improve customer service and employee relations, um, as well as help to establish a successful relationship between stakeholders. So successful businesses and organizations often strive to continuously improve customer service and employee relations. And when the customer or employee that has a disability, you know, having this fundamental knowledge of disability uh, specific etiquette can really help the business or the employer um, to establish a successful relationship. Also, the ability to identify reasonable workplace accommodations um, is <clears throat> so important when working with an employee that has a disability. You know, that can be done in um, collaboration with the employee as well as any support um, persons they might have, like an employment specialist or a vocational rehabilitation counselor. Um, you know, lastly, it's the availability of those reasonable workplace accommodations means that people with all types of disabilities will feel more welcome and valued within the workplace. So I really hope you enjoyed this uh, webcast. And if you have any additional questions or comments, please leave them on the discussion board. And if you'd like more information, um, please visit our website at vcurrtc.org. Thank you.